I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, does this ruck? The answer is yes, it does. It rucks very well. What rucks? Well, the MPL 22 mountain panel loader from Evergoods. It's fantastic. Love it. Loaded it up, a steel plate and some sand. We're out here on the open road. It's awesome. So what are we gonna do today? We're gonna talk about the MPL 22. We're talking about how it's related to its big brother, the MPL 30 from Evergoods. We're also gonna compare it to some other great Evergoods bags, along with some non Evergoods bags. Compare it side to side, see what we like. I've done a bunch of reviews on Evergoods bags in the past, so we're gonna get some of them out and talk about some of the reviews I've done in the past. We're also going to answer your questions. You asked, let's get them answered. Let's talk about the MPL 22. And no, I'm not dragging it down this road. Today's video is all about the Evergoods MPL 22. Smaller brother to the bigger size MPL 30. Love that pack for everything it does. It's definitely outdoor focused compared to the more EDC versions of backpacks that you see from Evergoods. So today we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna look at this one, like I said in the intro, we're gonna compare it to some others, and then we're gonna answer your questions, which there's a lot of great questions out there about this bag in particular. So without further ado, let's remove the others for now and just talk about this, the MPL 22. All right, so here we are. This is, I uh, you know, just came back from a ruck, so it's packed out still. That's why it's standing so well because it's got a sandbag in the bottom of it. Now it's kind of half packed. A lot of people ask me, what does it look like half packed? So let's just get right to that. Let's take out the cast two, which I had packed in the front. And I have a packable jacket, Sealy, available at Huckberry. Got another little picture on that before. And, and there's really not much in the front. So as terms of the grab and go backpack, that's kind of what it looks like. Take out some bottle pockets, just to kind of show you what it looks like. And kind of just a lugged around way. Now it does sit a lot differently. These pockets are just better designed, I think, for the front compared to the CHZ 22, the Civic Half Zip, which kind of had that duck bill thing going. This doesn't has it have as much or really noticeable at all when it's half packed. So that's it. What else do I have in here? Just before we gonna go over all the features, well, in my rucking adventure here, I had a couple things. First, I had this 20 or no, 13 pounds, 13 pound sand kettlebell from GoRuck. And then I had a, just a 10 pound weight from GoRuck just because I wanted something else in the back panel to give it a little bit more rigidity. Um, you could either do a 30 pound plate here, 20 pound plate, maybe another size sandbag. But I really wanted two things first to kind of feel see if I could feel this plate on my back panel, which I could not. And then I also wanted to see how having this weight in the bottom of the bag to see if it kind of put some more pressure on here. Some of the Evergoods bags, a lot of people can complain about this kind of digging into their back. I did not experience that here with this um, frame sheet, which we'll get to a chart at the end and you'll see that there's, you know, this has got a more foamy, frame sheet than any of the other Evergoods bags. So, but it is, I would say sufficiently thick enough where I didn't feel the plate and I did not feel the kettlebell um, on my back. And honestly, it was really, really comfortable. So I got nothing bad to say in terms of rucking with this thing with either a sandbag or a plate. So back to the bag, completely empty. So people also want to see what the bag looked like empty. Again, I'll get to your questions, but I'm kind of answering a couple as we go. So here it is, 22 liters, and just, there it is, empty. And again, what is this bag really for? It's a nice grab and go option. Do everything, go outside. It lacks some of the everyday carry, dedicated laptop on the outside, top pocket kind of things. You'll see some of the other bags when we talk about comparisons. But nonetheless, I think it's just an over-engineered, perfect do-anything bag that you really are, it fits squarely in that grab and go category, everyday carry, 
but more of an outdoor theme to it. Looks great. Anyway, so really like this one for what it is. I really did like, and I do like the MPL 30, so I knew I'd probably like the MPL 22 as well. So standard loop panel patch on the front. It's square, so you kind of have to find a patch that's gonna work for you. This is by PS Patch Designs. It makes some really great ones. Got several of theirs, highly recommend. Link in the description to their website. Two external pockets, two bottle pockets. And that's it. No laptop sleeve zipper like you see some other designs. No yoke top pocket area. Uh, and that's it. So the, the, the pockets themselves, as we pack this out here in a second, really sizable. And it's got a key loop, key lash loop, whatever however you want to say it, with a clip. I just got this one little uh, flashlight on there. For me, it's not keys. It's more a flashlight. Big enough for just about anything. You know, you would lose your cell phone in there. It's a little too big for that. This pocket here, the front pocket, is super cool as well, just because it's just nice and big. Now, there's no organization in either of these two pockets, or on the inside for that matter. There is little drain holes, so if you got water in there, if we put a water bottle in there, because there wasn't enough from the outside, you put something bigger in here, maybe you put some wet items, that's gonna leak out the bottom and do very well in terms of keeping everything kind of separated. That's a pretty cool feature. Bottle pockets, again, also very awesome. And they also have a little exit port for whatever you put in here in case it was you know, more dirt because this mesh, which is you know folded over and sewn, uh, it's definitely strong enough to hold anything you put in there. But if it leaked, it would uh, either dry through that or leak out the bottom. The back panel and shoulder straps are pretty much every good standard. Have no issue with these, uh, you know, and I don't know, people are gonna ask, does, does it make noise? Yeah, the foam that they use and the texture of the material, when you kind of rub it together, makes that noise. Now it wears in a little bit over time and it really, honestly, I didn't even notice this when I pick it up and rock. It's just when you do that motion, which you're not gonna do anyway, it's just when you kind of grab it, you might hear a little bit of a noise. It doesn't really bother me anymore. It did initially, but now I'm just kind of used to it and honestly, it goes away after using it. Included sternum strap. There's no strap keepers on any of these. It does come with, I would say, a waist belt. So designed to keep it attached to your body. It's not going to be weight, uh, weight or load bearing. But the, what, what is cool though is that there's these little loops in here, and the buckle fits through, and then it holds its position there, and it's just easily removable. This size pack, I really wouldn't use it, so I took it off immediately because I was going to go wreck with this thing. But if you needed it, you wanted it, it's included and comes with it. This back panel, like I said, is the breathable design that you're gonna see on every Evergoods bag now. And the regular edition of the hip pack has this same breathable mesh kind of thing going. It's nice, it works. There's a little bit of airflow in there, but you know, any backpack on your back is gonna sweat a little bit and this is no different. Very smooth on your back, very nice and slick, so it feels great. Definitely gonna need a sternum strap for this kind of design. The frame sheet, which I'll point out later when I get to the chart, is different. It's the only one that has this maybe thinner, more foam, but it is nice. It makes it more flexible. There is no aluminum bar in here like we see on the MPL 30, which kind of just retains that curve, helps it be more comfortable on your back. This is just more malleable, more flexible, Keeps on your back, bends to however you're gonna do it. And it is comfortable. Like I said, I had weight in there for about four miles and it was great. I had no issue with it. It was perfectly cool and nice. And when we get to the dimensions here and at the end, we compare things 17 and a quarter, something like that, almost 18 inches, 17 and three quarters. Nice, top handle, cool. No side handle, like you'll see on some of the other designs, a bigger bag uh, and no, you know, compression, gear attachment loops uh, on the side. It's just, it's a very clean looking grab and go style of bag. Inside, as we get into this, we're gonna pack it out, don't worry. This full clamshell, which is, you know, it's biggest differentiator from the Civic half zip. This is full zip. Now it does allow you to maybe zip halfway down and use these front pockets or at least access the top one. That's nice. Um, can't see that I would do that with this, but you could. Nice little standard top pocket on the front. Put your phone, anything else. I've just got a garage built gear thing in there and a pocket knife. Side 
zip mesh pocket on this panel, which is good. You can kind of see the shape of it now because of the way that it, it's just more tapered down to the opening of the bag, just because the way it opens. Very similar to, yeah, you guessed it, the MPL 30. Internal wise, pretty simple. Nothing organization wise on the outside. There is a loop on the top for you to hang your hydration bladder. And then little port exits, just like the MPL and a lot of the other bags, you can run the hose through this sleeve and then exit out onto the front of the shoulder straps. So that's pretty cool. And it is a very nice design. You can access this frame sheet. Maybe if you wanted to stiffen it up, put in, put in something comfortable. And we'll just open this up just to kind of show you. I mean, there it is. It's just a kind of a dense foam. It's pretty simple cut for the size of the bag. So you could remove this, maybe get something more stiff in there if you wanted or needed it. But I kind of like the fact that it's flexible just because it makes it more grab and go, slightly more packable. You could do that with this bag for sure. And it was sufficient in my use case. And I think it will be fine for most people. You don't need the aluminum bar in the size bag just because you just want it to be more flexible in what it does. There is, again, plate pocket. Well, that's where I had the 10 pound plate. Put your laptop in there. I think it carries up to a 15 inch laptop. You could do that. It is, uh, you know, as you look at the bottom here, let's do that. Sewn with enough material so it is elevated when this thing is totally packed out. Now, elevated and protected by that bottom thinner foam, so you just got that to work for, but I think it is, it'll work definitely to keep whatever you have in there from impacting the ground as you throw this bag around town. So that's, it's elevated about an inch and a half or so, but super cool. That's the bag. Simple features, simple utility. Like it. So let's just pack it out with some stuff and kind of see what fits. Now, kind of going backwards, normally I have it packed and I unpack it. This is empty, now we're gonna pack it up. But what I had in here before is just this packable jacket. That's kind of, if you ask me, this top pocket in the front and the outside is really what it's perfect for. It's sizable, it's not just a tiny little pocket. Packable jacket, easy on the go. When you want it quickly, because it started to rain, you're gonna wanna go uh, probably there. Now you could have a bigger jacket that maybe wasn't as packable, and you might use this bigger area down here. I just had for comparison, because we're kind of going all ever goods on this one for the most part, I had the cast two, two liters of size internally. And it's not, you know, it's probably 80% full, just enough of stuff where it'd be a little bit malleable. And, uh, it, but it does fit with plenty of room to grow in this front pocket area. Plenty of room for the cast one in this pocket as well. That's obviously gonna fit if the cast two, the cap one, because the cast two fits. So there you go, we got that kind of already packed out. Now the main event, you know, the easiest thing to pack in there, in my experience, was the eight liter Evergoods packing tube. And to give it some, you know, ability to stand, that's what I've been using, just using this eight liter packing cube in the bottom. And on the top, we see Lots of room and flexibility. Now, you know, before we get to more of that, this top area, I just had, again, you've already seen, garage built gear, pocket knife, more room, could put my phone in there. This area, you know, perfect for probably a first aid kit, maybe some other items that you wouldn't necessarily need, maybe a snack pocket, keep all your snacks in one place, an internal, so that it wouldn't get all wet from the outside of the pockets, maybe. I don't know. But either way, that's how I'd probably use those on the go. This way, you know, hydration bladder, cool. I, I don't normally use a hydration bladder on the day to day. I do on a go ruck event, but normally I've got bottle pockets and that's just kind of the way I roll normally. Putting some other just dimension to all this stuff. Here's the Griffin edition of the Cat 2. You know, so that fits in there quite nicely. And then on this side, I just had a McKinnon, Peter McKinnon Nomadic. And honestly, I still had room for a field pocket, go ruck field pocket. So that's kind of how we have things. A little bit of room still left in the top as we zip this thing shut. But that's kind of, you know, if you ask me, kind of a standard loadout to really 10 zippers. <clears throat> kind of show off how this bag packs out. Now, I'm gonna have to push this thing at the way bottom for this thing to stand up because it 
just not wanting to stand. So here we go. Mm, doesn't stand super great, but I did, I will be able to get the sand. In fact, we're just gonna do that. We're just gonna pack this, push this stuff all the way to the bottom. So this sucker stands. Sort of. All right, so here we go. But when you do that, you leave a little bit of room on the top. You could put another small item in there. I don't know, it's hard to see. There's enough room in there. About the size of a water bottle. Not that you would need more, but that's generally what's left in the top part of this bag after I packed all that other stuff in there. Now the side bottle pockets are super cool and they fit just about anything. Biggest Nalgene for sure. Of course, that means it'll fit the smaller Yeti that I normally pack, the 18 ounce. And then this side, most of the photos you've seen and in the video that my rucking, I carried this 36 ounce. Of course, I'm making it look easy. 36 ounce and it will fit. 36 ounce Yeti on this side. So there you go. I would say this thing's at now 100% capacity. You know, 90 because there's still room in the top of that. But, nine, but really most of this bag you know, that's, that's kind of how it would roll. And it is a deeper bag, not as wide as most of the Evergoods bags. So when you complain in, or when you compare volumes here in a second, when you do that, you'll see that this bag is pretty narrow compared to even like a PLC 20. It's still stacked up a lot differently. But anyway, what don't I like about this? Well, I can see what they did with this being a simpler bag. And so they didn't put compression uh, that prevents it from carrying some bigger, taller items, but you know, it would have been nice maybe on one side to put that. You know, I don't know. I do think, I would, I still think we could do, you know, a slash pocket up here personally, but then it becomes more like the CHZ 22. And I understand that, just keeping this bag simpler, but that would have been nice. I also don't like, like my complaint on the MPL 30. You know, it would've been nice that they could just build in another one of these loops and then another little loop up here that would be essentially not really visible, but that you could use to attach a trekking pole. I don't necessarily think this is ice ax material, but if it's big enough, you could put, you know, an ice ax or some sort of trekking pole on there. As it is, you kind of have to jam your trekking poles on the side and, but they'd be unsecured on the top or put them on the inside. That's really it. If you want to be full outdoor for me, I just think you have to have a way to carry trekking poles. And then for here, it's really just jamming the side, which is, you know, not a bad idea. In fact, let's just do that. That's my biggest complaint. I had them on the uh, MPL 30 here, but we take them off and we say, well, this is all we got. There you go. So this is a the Z poles from Black Diamond, they fit nicely in there. And, but you know, a little unsecured. Not the end of the world, but just something to consider if that's how you're gonna roll and use this bag, you're gonna throw them in there and they're gonna be slightly unsecured. Now, if you have bigger, taller ones, they're definitely gonna be sticking on top. But for this one, I'd say they're fine. If you got these Z poles, which could press down a lot tighter. Anyways, so that is the MPL 22, MPL 22. Let's compare it to some other designs just so we can see how it maybe compares and first on the list is of course the big brother here we go uh, and we'll put the dimensions here so you can see how they stack up and again mostly the depth of this bag and the height really and the width really all of it adds to the bigger size of the 30 liter versus the 22 and they uh, they look 30 looks a lot bigger than this 22 liter and the differences I've kind of already mentioned a few but there's no compression like we have on this side so we have the top and the bottom on both sides of the bag with strap keepers all that stuff we have more handles over here so we got a handle here no handle on this side so one extra handle uh, and then that's pretty much the difference there back panel just taller and you have that aluminum bar, which helps this retain this curve and just keeps it more comfortable on your bag. Back panel shape, I mean, it's still the same classic, I would say MPL shape, 
but um, that's it. We also have, in this case, a top loading front pocket. This is side loading. And no organization on this one either. What do I have in here? Oh, pull tabs. I haven't put them on there yet. But drain holes on this one, but it's side loading on the MPL 30. Top loading, no difference. Probably about the same bag, I would think, in terms of volume differences. Internally, just going over through everything, we have essentially the same side opening zip on the front, top opening zipper, and then really no different on the inside with internal organization or lack thereof. So really, in summary, side entry front, two compression and one side handle, things you don't see on the 22 liter. Again, rough and tumble, more simple, grab and go, just makes sense when you just have a everyday carry kind of thing, you would go, you would omit some of those features that you would see on the 30 liter. There you go. Some other everyday, everyday carry bags. Now this is of course the CPL 24. This is in waxed tan. This is a Griffin edition. And I'm not gonna go, this, this video would get really long if I went side by side for all these, but in terms of how they stand, about the same. So, you know, here's some dimensions. So you can see at least how they stack up. Again, still more narrow of a bag for the MPL 22. Big standout differences here that make this more everyday carry is you got the side entry laptop. You have this bigger side entry pocket with organization on the inside and more of the same on the inside with organization and that kind of stuff. So, you know, that's what it is. These design, oh, and the top pocket, Ta-da! top pocket. There you go. Now that's the CPL 24. The PLC 20, which is a little bit smaller than this, much simpler design, one big front opening pocket. And just the way it sits looks a lot differently too. I'll put a photo over here of the PLC 20. So you can see what that looks like compared to this. No side bottle pockets, just a totally different design and a much thicker material. So there you go, that's the PLC 20. Now, the big one that everybody wants to compare this to is the CHZ 22. Same size bag, but this one is just deeper and narrower in terms of a side-by-side. -side. It is um, because of that wider stance of the CHZ 22, just looks a lot differently. And again, the reason I don't have it, I didn't like it because I don't like the half zip entry. I think this one executes side bottle pockets much better. And I didn't like that front pocket area, just the way it fit. And of course there's internal access to that pocket, not on the front like you have here. So for me, I didn't really like the CHZ 22 or 26. This one is a way better bag for me day to day because of the laptop situation and everything else. Yeah, it lacks, lacks the top pocket, but you know, the CHZ 22 just wasn't, you know, I'll be honest, my style. This one is totally my style. All right, so that's the Evergoods bags. No, oh, no, it's not. I have one more. The CTB 26, much bigger bag, and a lot like the CPL 24, just a lot better EDC. Of course, this is the Phoenix 2. This one has the side entry laptop uh, on the top. Of course, the top pocket, which I know and love, and two front pockets, which is a big plus for me. A little bit bigger than the CPL by two liters, but this design really just speaks to me. I like this one a lot for travel. This is kind of my middle class travel bag, middle weight class. And of course I have this Thermo Liftworks strap system, which I highly recommend because you know I love Fidlocks and that's what I put on this one. It is definitely awesome. Thermo Liftworks for the win on that. All right, now what about some non GORUCK bags? Well, I'm glad you asked. One thing is in terms of the grab and go category, the GORUCK M22 is my go-to and it's 21 liters, it was made in 22. So that's just a kind of a thing to point out. Way different dimensions, external uh, laptop, more external pockets over here. Of course, I added the Fitlock buckles myself. There's another side pocket on here. One bottle pocket on the M22 and really just a much different feel. Back panel is gonna feel a lot different. The strap design is a ton different. More padded over here and more curved on the Evergoods, but just side by side, this is kind of how they 
stack up. Of course, there's nothing in here, but this is uh, the Ranger Green M22. This is kind of my grab and go option. It's not that, if I want smaller, I go bullet. So here it is side by side with a 15 liter bullet. Of course, a lot of capacity difference here, but again, you get about similar straps in terms of thickness and weight, but just different design for the Go Rock, just a different look. There's only two external, one external pocket really, because this one doesn't have the top zip pocket, but internal organization is pretty close. And, and more packable over here just because it's smaller. So that's how they look side by side from the bullet grab and goes. Um, to be honest, what's gonna happen now is in the grab and go category for me is going to be probably a bullet for small, M either M22 or this. Now, in the grab and go category, kind of determine like, you know, what do you, what look are you looking for? How are you gonna use the bag? This one has a much cleaner profile. And of course you can carry two bigger bottles than you can over here. So personal preference, what that's gonna come down to, just cause they look drastically different. There's a question coming up. So I'm just, since I'm comparing bags, what about the Prometheus Design Works PDW Shadow? Well, that's what it looks like side by side. Of course, 24 liters here, 22 liters over here. I am definitely going to compare these two going forward and actually what i'm going to do is i'm still i still owe you the review of this one that'll happen probably the next couple of weeks i'm really kind of getting backed up here there's a lot of cool features of this one and i'll bring out the mpl 22 when we do that won't that be cool coming soon all right before we get too far along let's let's do something here let's talk comparisons and i've brought up the bags before but i did want to look at them um, in terms of a big chart. So here we are, let's go over here, put the chart right here so you can see what I'm looking at. Now, as you can see, I've compared the PLC 20, the CHC 22, the MPL 22, the 30 and the 24, the CPL 24. I didn't bring in the 26 because it's just a little bigger bag and totally different design. But you can see a couple things to highlight. First, when I compare the MPL 22 to the 30, you can see the differences in how they get the bigger volume. They shrink the width and it is a lot shorter, about the same depth of bag for both those. And that's how they get the extra capacity. The features that I wanna point out in terms of external material is most of the Evergoods bags are this 840D material. Not so with the outdoor bags, they are 420D, just a little lighter weight. And then the internal difference is on the bigger bag, the 30 liter, it's 420 on the inside. This one has a 210 on the inside. To be honest, I never didn't, I didn't notice that. I wouldn't have known unless I looked at it. Feels about the same, looks about the same, just more durable on those bigger bags than it is on this, but it's on the inside. So it, I think way sufficient and it does save some weight. I've already talked about the frame sheet. This one has an XLPE, I'll put the acronym down at the bottom, versus the HDPE of all the other Evergoods bags. So this was different. I showed you that foam. It's a little different, but it is, I'd say, sufficiently thick. It's kind of, a, I think, a great choice. Uh, aids in flexibility and also just keeps it, keeps your back padded from maybe a bigger bulky item that you have on the inside. Other than that, some other things, you know, people ask between the CHG22 and the MPL22, what's the difference? Well, height-wise, it's about a quarter inch difference. You're not gonna be able to feel it on your back. So if the CHG22 fits for you height-wise, this one will do well for you as well. If it's too tall, then obviously don't go with this. It's the same height, essentially. It's a much wider bag, like I highlighted there, 11 inches versus nine and a half over here on the MPL 22. About the same depth, within a quarter inch, same weight-ish, same price. Material differences, only slightly. It's a 840D on the outside and a 420D, and it's got that different frame sheet. So it mostly comes down to design and really width of the CHG 22. So for me, I didn't like the half zip and I just didn't like the way the pockets looked or way the bag looked when it was empty or even half empty. P personal preference. I like the MPL 22. There you go. All right, there you go. That's a chart. Just comparing them side by side. That's helpful for you. Cool. Come back, bookmark this. Come back and look at that later if you're wanting to compare any of these backpacks side to side. That said, let's move on to your questions because post it out there on social media. Hey, ask me your questions about the MPL 22. And I had a lot of great questions. So let's just do that 
right now. So here's some of your questions. First one, looking at this for office carry, I'm also thinking I could use this for a watered down carry of the CTB26 for other travel needs. Yes, I think that would be a good choice uh, to do that. It's definitely a simpler bag, more grab and go, better for EDC. And you could use it for very light travel. 22 liters is not a lot of room. You kind of limit yourself in terms of what tech you can bring compared to the more you know, the CTB26 for sure, because it has all those pockets. A lot of pockets means a lot of places to put stuff that you can access on the go. This has some good options, but not nearly as much as I would say the CTB26. Curious about this for EDC use. How's the bag feel? Thinner straps, frame sheet with a laptop and a sleeve packed for a standard EDC loadout. So in a standard EDC loadout, which I pretty much have a general mix with the packing cube baby not something you would pack on the day-to-day -day. but the thinner straps is just really the straps i feel are mostly an ever good standard i didn't really notice a difference in the strap design i think they're essentially the same compared to every other ever goods bag now compared to a, a go ruck bag yeah they feel a little thinner but on my four mile ruck with 30 pounds felt just fine you also asked does the bag stand on its own once the bottles are in the pocket. So again, the way I have this packed out, it doesn't automatically stand. And in most of those outdoor bags, it's just because that frame sheet sticks out. It's more designed to contour to your back versus be a stand up bag. So it does, and I have had it stand up, but it's just a little bit leaning. So I'm holding it so it doesn't fall over. So stand up, eh, sometimes. What's the bag itself big enough for? Well, big enough 22, definitely a great day bag light carry and if you were to use it on the go for a light weekend i think it's totally good for that really anything and somebody's gonna ask later about the capacity how's it feel i don't know that i would say 22 liters if you handed me this bag i'm like well what's the volume of this i would say it feels more in the 20 ish so i think it feels smaller than the 22 maybe 20 and a half i don't know uh, but it is, does feel a little bit smaller than i'd say 22 liters do the big bottle sleeves make the bag feel relatively small or unbalanced? I don't think so. I think uh, without the bottles is a much narrower profile of a bag, but I also like the width of the bullet ruck for hiking because I just don't feel like I'm just almost wearing the whole thing. It just happens to be back there. And so I do like the narrower design of this compared to others, personally. How many packing cubes could you fit in here? Well, you saw what I fit in there in terms of packing cubes. And really, with the eight liter at the bottom, I could fit probably, I know I could fit the 10 liter up here and maybe even peak design at the top, just because it does fit quite a, bun quite a bunch of stuff. Does it feel, does it wear long? Well, it feels exactly long as a CHC 22 in my opinion and it feels like the that's an accurate measurement the 17.75 inches tighter or larger 22 liters yeah it's a tighter 22 liters definitely feels small does it stand on its own not really definitely when it's not fully packed biggest bottle well i have a 36 liter or had one earlier the yeti fits just nicely and it fits perfect no sticky zipper spots. So the CHZ had a narrow area where I was making an, a turn. This one, just plenty of room around the zipper track. It's uh, perfectly fine. In my opinion, fits very nicely. Well-designed zipper track, no sticky spots. No organization in the external pockets. Can already answer that one, showed you that. Frame sheet is removable, so it's replaceable and you could do whatever you wanted with there or just remove it, make it a little more packable if you wanted to. And the frame sheet feels sufficient, I would say. Size compares with other Evergoods products. I think I answered that in the table before. Rewind the video, you know, rewind it like you used to in old school. How is the back panel compared to that of the 30? Well, aside from the bar that's missing and the thicker frame sheet, more rigid frame sheet in the 30, this one is good at the size. I think it's a good trade off when you went to the smaller bag to go with that thicker foam but not as rigid as you see in all the rest of the Evergoods bags, in my opinion. The 22 liter does not have the same contour built in, but it does contour nicely to your back. So it is comfortable, I would say, regardless of what you have in the back of that. Does it feel like it hugs the back? I do. I think it does a nice job. It feels great. Can it fit a Cap 1, Cap 2, Transit Cube, X Cross Pod? And can you do a comparison of the 30 liter? I think I talked about the 30 liter and it does fit the transit cube in there. I have the cast two in the front, which is about the same size as the cap 
or the cross pod for sure. And the cap one, I don't have out here right now, but you can fit this in a lot of different places. You can fit it in the front, you can fit in the bottle pocket. You could just jam it into that internal zip. A lot of places you could put this one liter cap one, but of course you're going to, you know, restrict space from other areas. Did they improve the laptop compartment? The MPL would put pressure on your laptop. Well, it is elevated, but it is narrow. So it is gonna put a little bit of pressure on your laptop. Again, not designed necessarily for a dedicated everyday laptop kind of bag. There's other bags that are better for that, but it is kind of a, in a pinch, you could use this. It would not be my primary option. This in terms of the dimensions, again, you can go back and look at those, but it is a deeper feeling bag, just the way these pockets are designed. And because it's narrower feel, it overall feels just deeper. Um, it's not any taller on your back. It's the same, but just that's where they gained that. And when they narrow the bag, they pushed it out uh, in terms of depth. So that's how it feels and it compares on your back day to day between the CHC 22 and the MPL 22. And the last one, does the depth cause it to pull back on your shoulders? Now, I, the design of the bag does not pull it back on my shoulders. It's really gonna come down to how you wear the bag and how high on your back you wear the bag. So it's tough for me to answer that question because I don't know how you're gonna wear the bag. I don't let things loose on my shoulders. It's usually pretty high on my back. Keep it cinched in. And in that regard, in this bag on my frame, 5'9", it definitely, the bottom of the bag fit nice and the small of my back. So it fit perfectly cinched up pretty high. So that's how I rocked this bag. There you go. That's answers to your questions that you asked me on Instagram and Facebook uh, and the stories, etc. That's it. That's the MPL 22 from Evergoods. I'm going to put some more miles in this thing. It's fantastic. Best for everyday carry, getting outside, grab and go, go do whatever you're going to do that day. Don't need a ton of stuff. Put it in the MPL 22 and get on your daily business. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up. If you did, subscribe to the channel. Got a lot more coming out soon. Not going to miss. You might want to sign up for alerts. See ya.